good morning to one and all present over here respected principal sir dr suresh shukrandi who is also contributing for the growth of mumbai university as a associate dean faculty of technology vice principal of the institute dr sunita patil madam resource person for today's webinar dr tapan kumar jain from indian institute of information technology nagpur hod's deans of various sections faculty members and dear participants i dr namrita ansari professor in electronics and telecommunication engineering and dean academics of kjs iit take this opportunity to welcome you all for the seventh day of webinar on internet of things under the national level webinar series on emerging areas of technology indicated by aicte and organized by kj somaiya institute of engineering and information technology cyan mumbai today's webinar is under one of the emerging areas mentioned by aicte and organized by department of electronics and telecommunication engineering under the guidance of our principal and vice principal dear participants talking about our institute KJS IIT is permanently affiliated to University of Mumbai approved by AICTE and DTE we are one of the reputed engineering institute having five engineering undergraduate courses in computer engineering information technology engineering electronics and telecommunication engineering electronics engineering and from this academic year 2020 21 we will be starting with the new branch of engineering that is artificial intelligence and data science with the intake capacity of 60 we also have one post graduate program that is masters in engineering in artificial intelligence with 18 seats capacity our institute is accredited by nac with a grade as well as our three programs are accredited by nba our institute has received best college award in the urban region by university of mumbai for the academic year 2018-19 recently our institute has been placed in the rank band of 250 to 300 by national institutional ranking framework that is nirf every year we participate in aicte cii survey we have been placed in platinum category for the last 2 years Our institute has also received 12th, 9th, and third rank at national level Robocon contest, project-based learning. Today's webinar is organized by the Department of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering. The Department of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering was established in year 2001, duly approved by AICT with an intake of 60 students. It remains committed to impart teaching. training and research in the field of technical education in most efficient manner to its students in the year 2004 the department intake in uh, increased to 120 students and continues to be the same till date department organizes various activities in the form of expert lectures webinars workshops industrial visit internship and many other curricular and co-curricular activities for the all-round development of students the department believes in innovation and perfection and works to give an engineering point of view to the students for their confidence building so as to solve technical problems with this i would like to introduce our resource person for today's webinar dr tapan kumar jain Dr. Tapan Kumar Jain is working as the head of the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering at Indian Institute of Information Technology, Nagpur. He has 17 years of industrial as well as academic experience. He is the senior member of IEEE. He has recently conducted five AICTE Training and Learning Academy faculty development programs on Internet of Things. He has close to twenty publications in international conferences and journals. His research in the field of wireless sensor network (IoT), data sciences, and image processing. Now, 
before i hand over mic to our today's speaker there is a small announcement for the participants dear participants your questions will be taken at the end of the session please post your questions in the chat box of youtube with your name and state the attendance come feedback link will be shared toward the end of the session so please feel the same to avail the e certificate of this session now without further delay i request dr tapan kumar jain to start the session over to you tapan sir thank you thank you namrata madam for the introduction and um, thank you to to the convener uh, uh, dr suresh sir principal uh, kg sumaiya institute of engineering and uh, information technology um, jashri khanapur madam namrata madam so i am very happy you know to interact with the participants in this time and uh, today definitely i'll uh, share my experiences in uh, related to internet of things and if you have any query as uh, madam suggest you can just put into the drop box so i am really happy to give the answer at the end of the sessions so i am just sharing the screen just to give me a one moment and then we'll start the so i hope uh, my screen is visible to all yes sir so so without further delay we'll just uh, this is my the agenda of my presentation and uh, we'll cover the what is uh, um, internet of things uh, iot revolution then the basic building blocks then the current in the industry 4.0 and so this is industry 4.0 and the cyclical topic internet of things so as i know the in the i am working as a head of the electronics and communication engineering in triple it nagpur established in uh, 2016 and uh, the the director is professor oji kakre earlier he was the director um, in vjti mumbai and our dean is uh, professor kurthari from vnit nagpur and we are engineering and electronics and communication engineering and we in computer science domain and as well as we provide some certification courses on machine learning data science internet of things and mathematical modeling so so now we'll start the the topic of the day that is the internet of things so here i just uh, you know divided these uh, internet of things and the uh, basically we start my topic with iot and um, The, that is the capital i capital o capital t and the capital i small o capital t so so that that means uh, so number one what what is uh, why i am choosing these two terms so what is the importance of these two terms and then the uh, the some stress on the iot and then the last what is iot so so because it is not the it's a online mode session so i'm not interact with my participants and the fellow colleagues so so i just give the answer for the same uh, same for the so so the answer is the iot capital ot is basically uh, interoperability testing small iot is internet of thing iiot is internet uh, industrial iot and the last is internet of everything so my 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 presentation is going to that flow only so i'll be covering to you know provide some kind of you know interface thing but our system is capable to interact to, to the another system 
as well as the the computer science engineering this is very important so so sup suppose somebody is writing a you know uh, develop one product and writing a code in java and somebody is writing a code in c and the another uh, developer is writing in python so hi how, how these three language are interact and give you the the the, the output or you can say the result or the target so so basis on that so we have the the system is a capability to do the interoperability so this is the major uh, you know concept which is you know the the most widely used in er you know 2000 when the y2k problem come so how you know cobol system interact with the entire financial domain systems because they are the date format is the different so so that time the 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 term come the interoperability is a very important term so that the same term we are using for our internet of things so how the different devices you know talk to each other because the because the iot as you know that is also known as the machine to machine communication right so the interoperability is uh, nothing but to provide the interface just you know passes the information or you can get the information from another system okay so it is not the the integration it is not the portability it is not the compatibility just the system is well you know behave to another system and share the informations now the the next is the capitalized small ot that is the internet of thing as you all aware this is a very popular term but nothing is different from you know the embedded systems why because earlier we studied the embedded system embedded system is what the the particularly performing our task using the specific chip you can say the asx or you can just uh, you know load one specific kind of operating system and perform in on the task now this uh, the electronic chip or you can say the asic application specific ic if you connect to the you know internet and you can extract the information from uh, to the remote places or you know one place to another place if you want to extract the this electronic information so you put the you know internet in this embedded device so it become a internet of things so things means here the things means sensors things means maybe software things means maybe uh, in connecting devices or uh, things maybe assay or things maybe uh, your embedded system anything and these data because the data is very voluminous very high so when we talk about the exchange of data and track of the data these all the you know exchange is possible onto the cloud right because the 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 small things is not capable to store the you know huge data so whenever we sense the data or we can fetch the data for the system we immediately transfer to the cloud with the hand help of internet so this is the you know basic crux what is iot so so in anything things may be anything or you can say things may be everything so whatever the things if you connect whatever things information if you connect to the internet and you you know uh, you sitting at home and you fetch the information that is nothing but it is iot right so so the moving this term when this term is come into the you know so the cabin austin is proposed this term in 99 and he basically he work in the mit lab and basically for the rfid cards so when the term proposed it's working uh, for the rfid cards so you know the the radio frequency tap id taps so nowadays people are also using the id taps so it come into the you know the the exact term internet of things as proposed by kevin austin in 99 right and then the last 20 years there is a lot of you know research and you know development and this particular field and, and you know the most of the people is working on this particular direction iot as i told you it is also named as the machine to machine uh, technology 
So this is the just you know, now the mind move to the the next slide is the IoT revolution. So so when I talk about the things things may be the sensors if you take particularly and internet internet basically nothing but it is a communication of the devices. So basically the communication come into the picture for the devices in 1800. Right, so 1876, you know, the, the Graham Bell invented the telephone. Right, so like that, the the innovation, you know, the, the uh, started in early 1800s. So this that time the IoT revolution is started. Right, and then the 1926, the Nikola Tesla sir is predicted the smartphone. In, uh, during the one technical magazine interview, he said that the, the, the one of the devices come and it behave as a box. So 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 now you can just imagine the vision of the the professor Nikola Tesla. He's predicted the smartphone in uh, 1926 itself. Now the the earlier you cannot imagine uh, the the size of your television. You tell me, can you just you know imagine what is the size of the uh, the first television come into the in India? So so the size is nothing but you are uh, you have seen the the Godrej Almeras. So so the 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 size of the TV is two Godrej Almera, and the the screen is only the seven inches. The size of the television is two Almera, and the screen size is only the six inches. The, the, the first television, you know, come into the, the, the city of Jabalpur, where the electronics and telecommunication branch operated in 1947. So I have, you know, you know, physically seen that uh, the television. So, so now, now you can imagine the size of the today's television and the that 1947's television. So, so big. So. Now the people has started the working on in fifty nine the the transistor and the 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 entire technology changes because the the MOSFET metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors come into the role. So the size of the the device is drastically reduced in this case. So this is the one of the important revolution. Then the nineteen eighty nine this. Sir Tim Bernal has invented W3, that is the worldwide WAM. So that is, you can say, the starting the internet uh, and that, uh, you know, widely you can use. And then mid 90, the, the first uh, connected device is created, that is the toaster and drink machine. So nothing but you can just, with the help of the, uh, the internet, you can, you know, start the machine and off the machine. That is the first kind of, you know, uh, the machine invented in 1990s. Then, uh, as I told you, 1999, the term was proposed by Kevin Austin. And then the smart refrigerator come in 2000 LG, where the, he, you know, just give me the information regarding the temperature, not the, the, the things which is required, but the what is the you know temperature you want to operate this uh, in which temperature these kind of you know um, techniques is available in 2000 in LG refrigerator. Then 2005 the the America had a vision that anytime any place connectivity for anyone that means the the mobile is you know the booming in that area and he you know he proposed that. So the the entire world is connected through the mobile phones so anytime any place connectivity is proposed by the america in 2005 then the 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 in 2011 the ip6 version 6 is launched after the ip4 it is the powerful version is launched in 11 and uh, so so the high speed connectivity is available through internet and the 2013, as Intel launches the its independent individual group for IoT solutions, and now the today the era is you know every you know company is working on IoT or using the IoT applications. So so it is the just like a nested of technologies. 
so i can say that it is internet of everything instead of internet of thing you can say that the internet of everything now move to the my next slide so so now we have just uh, see the revolution start from iot as from 1800 to you know 2020 and basically uh, the lot of development is you know uh, working place and since um, you can say the last 20 years the the people started working on this and because the internet of thing the most essential part is the internet connectivity so the you can say the high speed connectivity you know after the ip6 so so in 2011 so last 10 years the people are working you know the only on the internet of things so because of the high speed high connectivity of the things now you can just uh, look at the one survey and um, uh, in 2003 there are the world population is somewhere around the 6.3 billions and where are the connected devices is 0.5 billion and the ratio you can calculate the per person is only 0.08 and then just directly move to the the world population is 2020 7.6 billion where you can now imagine the connected devices is the 50 billions so per person there are almost you know the seven devices is connected per person most the, the seven devices is connected so so now you can imagine the how powerful is internet from 2003 to 2000 2020 okay so 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 what kind of future in the you know uh, you can see that in after 10 years why 2030 what is the you know the the future of this particular iot devices so so the, in the same time the the task is how to you know we manage how to minimize this the number of devices per person so what type of you know technology we are proposing or what type of system we have to prepare what type of architecture so we can you know um, embedded as many as sensor into the you know the small devices because because if it is ratio is you know the increase so so obviously the the trade off between when you increase the the ratio of the per person connected devices so obviously some kind of you know drawback come into the picture how can you know um, handle these kind of you know data uh, the the how to you know uh, nullify the effect of the internet or you know the uh, different em rays electromagnetic rays is. so so these are the some challenges so people are working on the two aspects one is how we can incorporate the internet of things my application and what are the you know future direction for that particular roads moving to the, the next slide so i pick one paper that is proposed by the Pereira and his team by 2014 we are the sensing as a service model from smart cities so nowadays when we talk about the internet of things people is easily correlate with the smart cities. right so one transaction is proposed the service model so so now for example if you're residing in the Mumbai and you want to, you know, measure the temperature of Mumbai city. So it is very difficult to deploy the, you know, temperature sensor to the entire Mumbai city, take the reading and then predict the results. So, so, so that is very difficult um, uh, to, you know, deploy the sensor in the city like Mumbai. So, so how do we get the data? So in this figure, if you look at the carefully, so I am starting from the, 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 the last fourth block, the sensor data consumer. So suppose I need the, the, the suppose I have a, you know, the big farmhouse the outside the Mumbai Una Express, and I, I have to, you know, do something for my agriculture. So I need some kind of information like the temperature information, the humidity information, my what type of seed is you know good for my you know this particular environment. So I need the some kind of the physical environmental data. So so it won't be possible to you know deploy the every time the sensors what 
type of you know physical quantity you want you just go to the market purchase that particular sensor and deploy it so it is very difficult because you have to farm your you know the network first so so your entire you know the the work is routed through the the forming a network instead of the agriculture so so we can just you know borrow these data from the extended service provider that is the block number 3 so what are they also what are those ex extended service provider the extended service provider task is suppose i am the consumer i am i want the temperature humidity data so i request to the extended service provider extended service provider task is to you know manage these data from different sensor publisher what are these publisher so suppose i am a publisher i am a publisher i have the data of entire bombay city of what temperature data of my entire bombay city i so so suppose the red one having the the temperature data or blue one having the humidity data or uh, the green one maybe the rainfall or something else data so these are the sensor publishers what are the roles the sensor publishers are take the data from the sensor owners so the, the important point in number one point is the sensor and sensor owners these are nothing but these are the things these are nothing but these are the things so maybe sensor publisher is only take the data from the sensor owners not the sensors only the data from the sensor owners so if you look at the first block where you can see that the 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 for the restaurant delivery purpose here the sign of the you know burger is showing with wifi sign means the how to deliver these um, data second the vending machine the automotive industry automatic car driving traffic monitoring the infrastructure you know monitoring so here the 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 one bridge is showing then the different you know the atmospheric data collection of course the mobile is a smart device play an important role or your mobile you know applic eh, sorry the smart applications like how to use this uh, uh, sensing data for you know the the microwave or refrigerator so is you know publish one fantastic paper so i request all of you just go through this paper as a sensing as a service model so so for example in bombay city if you want the temperature data of particular you don't deploy the sensor you just contact to the extended service provider they will help you out and they will provide the the whatever data you want okay so so the the the, the job of the extended service provider is to you know fetch the three four types of uh, sensor data clean them up according to the vendors they can provide it sensor publisher is to fetch the data to get the data from sensor owners and provide it to the extended service providers okay so this is the very good paper you can just go through it whenever you have time just go through it so so now the next topic is the what is the iot building blocks or the layer architecture approach so as we aware when we talk about the the layer architecture we know the the there the five layer or seven layer model in this case so five layer means when we talk about the five layer then the the obviously the physical layer data link layer network layer transport layer and then the application layer so these are the nothing but these are the some virtual layers they are nothing but these are the virtual layers right so so for our simplification we divide the task in these you know five categories five tasks but how these are they layer are you know dependent to the another layer so i you know in this particular you know for iot i divided into the the four major part and uh, if you just correlate these four major points with our previous sensing as a service model also correlate right so in this case if you is i am starting from the you know down to a you know bottom up approach so in the bottom up approach if you look at it there is a sensor connectivity and networks there is a sensor connectivity in network in the bottom so what are the sensor as i told you these sensor are nothing but it's a software it's a sensors a 
actuators, RFID tags, your embedded devices, anything. Things means it come into this particular block, but these things are how they can talk to each other. They form their own network, which is connected, you know, the wirelessly, not wired. It is connected to the wirelessly and just make a sensor network. The sensor network, form a sensor network and provide this information to the your gateway. What do you mean by gateway? So whenever we, you know, connect to the different sort of different small, small network, we have to use the some kind of, you know, communication technology. So in this case, the communication technology plays a very important role. So what type of communication technology you want to use? So for example, if, if you, you know, install one device, only one device, and you want to, you know, secure that, you can use it at home, either in the Bluetooth, or you can use your, you know, the local Wi-Fi network, or you can use the, the GSM network. So there are n number of you know the the communication communication mechanism is uh, available nowadays. So 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 you can use the either on the wide area network or maybe the 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 local area network, right? So so in wide area network you can use the you know the GSM or um, LTE technology or LTE advanced or five G. You can use Wi-Fi, Ethernet, uh, gateway controller, and just people are also, you know, working on the different technology like the Li-Fi or the LoRa. So, now, so this, this all the communication technology, which is, you know, the the collect the information and just directly route it to the cloud, uh, cloud. So this also play an important role. As I told you, the 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 small IoT device is not, you know, capability to store the huge data. So whatever the data you sense is, just do the time stamping and pass through the, you know, cloud. Cloud in the cloud they will process and you know they they, they clean the data. So the gateway and network in the second last layer is very important. Extract the data from the sensors and just you know pass it into the 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 cloud. Now the third one in the bottom, or you can say the top, second one, the management services is nothing but is, you know what kind of data you required. What is your data flow? What is my consumer requirement? What sort of data is it required? I, I want the, the next five days, uh, you know, the data, future data, predicted data. For my temperature or the rainfall, or I need you know the last ten days data. So like that, what are the your requirements? What type of application you are designing? So this is the task of the management services. There they can model your data, they can train your data, and they can provide the you know extract of data to you. Right. So all these things, the data flow management, security control, device modeling. So so they they play the important role. So, so people are working in nowadays, you know, they come up with the entire complete solution. So come So my request in this particular time, you don't, you know, waste the time to make a, you know, entire of particular IoT. So you'll take these, for example, you can pick up management services. In management services, you can pick the security control. So what sort of, you know, a mechanism will provide to secure the data, how to encrypt the data, what type of you know power requirement, what type of process requirement, can the security incorporate in the sensor end or gateway or management. So these kind of you know the small small module you have to develop, and once you develop these small module, then you can combine. So. So, 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 so no, no need to, you know, to work on the entire field because entire cause of security or the physical sensors and the last is the, you know, applications. So last point is application here. So the, what type of applications? So there are so many applications in for IoT, but the problem is here we have to put the application on the, you know, top or last one layer. 
but the application when you decide the application then only you can able to decide the what type of sensor is required right so so every layer are directly or indirectly is related to to the you know these building blocks so 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 by suppose i take the example of the the this or i want to measure the temperature so if you want to measure the temperature number one a sensor is required so again this fall into the which layer this fall into the 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 bottom layer that is the sensor connectivity and network layer now my point is these sensors if you you know take the expect the values how they are connected so so in this the what type of technology communication technology you are using that is coming to the fall into the gateway network layer now in application i just want i need only the what is the minimum temperature what is the maximum temperature or what is the average like these three terms i have to so so but you have deployed around 20 or 30 or 100 sensors so no need to bother about these 30 or uh, 40 readings you need only the minimum maximum so how your data is modeled what type of packet requirements so these you fall into the management service layer so all are you know relate these layer are you know related to each other so this is the my, you know approach when i design you know the 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 any sort of application so when i you know give the project to my students so um so every student you know one student working on one layer and come up with one solutions and make sure they are the interoperable so so whatever is the solution is proposed by the student one it is make sure it is sync with the you know student two that means the sync with the gateway and network layer similarly whatever the solution proposed by the network gateway layer it is you know the the in well connected with the management service layer so this is the basic building blocks of iot building or you can say whenever you propose any sort of application just keep in mind these you know so so you can work you know nicely and execute it at the end otherwise it would be very difficult to you know interface these kind of systems so so we had already talked about the 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 sensors uh, connectivity and network layers um, uh, in the end i'll share this presentation so so we had already discussed the the layers and now i'm just come to the the application point this is very important because this tool and uh, you know to make a small or minor project in you know, the so when we talk about the students the more of the student you know the working on the the iot for agriculture domain most of the student is working in the iot for agriculture domain but there are you know the lot of you know the scopes is available in other field as well apart from the agriculture so so these like working on agriculture smart city so smart city come into the smart uh, parking smart traffic control garbage management system lightning system or you can say the monitoring of the infrastructures or now at this the people are working for the you know the, in this pandemic situation thinking how to you know measure the social distances with the help of the iot devices how the robotic arm can we you know help in our you know medical staff so a lot of applications in healthcare domain as well available and obviously the space applications because the the in the when we make us satellite or you can say the the devices which monitored so they have the special type of sensor embedded onto this so how this um, 
space application we can use the iot so a lot of uh, you know application is there so in the same time i would request you can just visit to the iot analytics website uh, so there they can update the the what is going on and what are the future upcoming technology so so you can just visit the iot analytics uh, website so i just take this um, from uh, iot analytics top 10 application and this top 10 application in the month of july so it is you know the the uh, the updated so if you look at this uh, particular um, website page now you can just uh, imagine the agriculture is come into the eighth position agriculture is come into the eighth position that means only the four percent this is the nothing but it is a global share of And if you start from the number one, it is for manufacturing or industrial application. So you can say that the industrial IoT is play a really big role. Number one, this is the you know future trend. So number one is the industrial IoT. Number two is the transportation or mobility sectors or the the. Now you can look the you know different. Uh, Edward, so, so so have you seen this um, MG Hector ad? So MG Hector ad is not you know they they don't bother about the what type of engine, what is the, but they are showing the how your you know car is connected to internet. So so my point is that the the these the transportation and the mobility devices are you know drastically use the internet of things and they are devices now the third one is the energy sector so here the the scl the scl is playing the the major role and they have deployed the you know lot of um, iot devices in the energy sector in the the africa and south asia so scl technologies play the very important role in india in the sector of energy so you also visit the SCL technology website. They are working, you know, um, for the Internet of Things and energy domain. And then the fourth one is the the twelve percent market share of enterprise edition is the retail market. Also, the fifth member in the same position is uh, using for uh, to develop the smart city. So smart city is very, you know, government. Uh, the Ministry of Urban Development proposes the 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 smart city project, but still the you cannot believe it. Only the eight percent of the revenue is utilized in these smart cities. So so all the big company, big giants, and you know now is moved to the smart cities because the lot of the growth and revenue option is available in these smart cities. But but during this pandemic time, this is you know the the down, and um, the uh, other is you know booming up. Also, also you can just go to the YouTube and um, how the the Flipkart is arranging their parcels in their Bangalore hub. So how they can dis, you know differentiate how to you know manage the order through the robotic arms. So so you can just a very nice video is you know provided by the Flipkart. So so the the very good automation process they are using to you know segregate and you know to prepare the dispatching of the orders. Now the the sixth position is the healthcare. Healthcare is also play the the important role and uh, the supply chain and management and then the agriculture then the building so now i'll tell you the one example of the building so in the the pune city the one of the you know famous builder is you know mounted the temperature sensor in entire flat outside and inside the boundary and around 2000 flats they deployed the sensor and every wall inside as well as outside 
and they collect the data in one year and then the next year they propose the the building where which side we can use the hollow ball concept or the some other material to do cool down the the wall temperature so based on the the temperature data of last one year they propose the 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 material what type of material we have to use in our wall in outside and inside to you know decrease the temperature so so a lot of applications is using so this is the the application which are using the architect this is the application using the architect to construct a new building model so so variety of you know applications is available uh, here so so you please visit whenever you have a free time you just go to the iotanalytics.com where the lot of information is available in this case so now next point is the the iot enablers and iot enablers is nothing but as i you know the, the currently the national level webinar is going on on the emerging area so these are the nine thrust or emerging areas are very important so how you know iot enablers how iot is required these thrust area how they are dependent so we'll take the the example what are the you know enablers so as i told you when we implement any applications you require the you know sensors so first you have to identify the applications and then identify what are the things to be required whether it is a software basis or hardware if it is hardware basis you have to uh, require the standard you know sensor or some rf use the rfid or zigbee so so wifi and uh, a low personal area network uh, i which is based on ip6 low pan or lora long short range so so these are the connectivity devices and last is the the enabling devices play the very important role so work on the machine learning part data analytics part so you can also work you can also contribute for the iot applications because why because when the sensor data uh, sends the data and it is directly uploaded to the cloud so cloud having the very huge data cloud having the very huge data so i'll take one example here suppose in maharashtra there are uh, somewhere around uh, the the 3000 substations in maharashtra suppose there are 3000 substations which is provided by you know the the maharashtra state electricity boards suppose we have 3000 and each in somewhere around five transformer so now you have in maharashtra you have somewhere around 15000 transformer so now if you perform some task what kind of task there are lot of you know tested test on to this transformer we had already studied in the, the basic electrical engineering there are the open circuit and short circuit tests so there are roughly you know these some 100 test Which is you know dependent on the you know transformers. So, but the their frequency is different. Some transformers, some test is per day, some is week. So, three thousand each having the five transformer. That means fifteen thousand transformer each having the you know hundred tests. So somewhere around. Uh, 15 lakh test now you can imagine you have the 15 lakh test results and if you you know keep on increasing this test results if you take you know some of the test is minute or some of the test is hour 
so so now you can imagine if you if you take the only the 10 test is you know every hour so so 10 test into 24 that means 240 test into 5 because of 5 transformer to 3000 so now this is the huge volume is generated of data because basis on this data now data become very huge so this come into the big data part on this big data all the data is you know uploaded onto the cloud so it's come into the cloud computing part come to the cloud computing part right and then second point is once you have the huge data uploaded onto the cloud you have to apply some algorithm for analytics purpose or you have to predict the health of the transformer so you have to apply some kind of machine learning algorithm artificial intelligence or deep learning algorithm so these are the some available technologies so in iot you can use big data in iot you can use the cloud computing in iot you can use the ai ml and deep learning how what type of you know sensors uh, network you have formed whether it is a regular network or whether it is the 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 ad hoc network which is con sensor are connected to wired or wireless. So lot of, lot of, lot of enabling technology incorporated in one IoT applications. So it is not necessary to, you have to, you know, complete the, the entire applications because it is very huge application, very big applications. So my point is what? My point is that you have to expert in only one domain, not in the, the entire one. So, so these are the enabling technology. Now, how you can say how the blockchain play important role in IoT? So, as I told you, the 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 management layer, which is you know responsible for the security of the data. So, can can we apply the blockchain in our IoT application? This is one question. So, any. So these are the, the 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 current you know emerging trends or area which are you know highly correlated, highly correlated, and these are the enabling technologies. So so again, I am emphasizing: do not you know stretch the application. You can work on to the module, and then you can you know combine and produce one application, right? So so these are the enabling technologies. So I hope this is clear. Now I'll move to the industry 4.0. And uh, the industry 4.0 is the you know subset of uh, fourth industrial revolution, which are normally classified as an industry, such as smart city. So, so my point is why we incorporate the industry 4.0 in our IoT, because as I told you, the, the maximum share, as I told you, the maximum share for today's in July 2020 application is industry, right? So the, the main component of the industry 4.0 is cyber physical system, internet of thing, industrial internet of thing, cloud computing, and then the cognitive computing and artificial. So my point is that, what is the difference between the Internet of Thing and industrial Internet of Thing? So if you, so for example, if you develop some kind of you know prototype, small prototype, and this small prototype when you convert it into a product of you know one or two sensors, it become your Internet of Thing product. But if you have you know the thousands of the and you combine thousands of prototype and make a one big product that is the, the, the industrial IoT. So how do they differ? Because if you using the normal IoT, so our room temperature is you know somewhere around not more than you know room temperature is 40 degree. And not you know in the in the Maharashtra, not below the you know 10 or 15 degree. 
So the operating temperature range is very small in this case, in IoT. But when we talk about the industrial IoT, the operating temperature range is varies. So maybe if you use the you know thermal power plant or in the place of boil, boiler, near the boiler, or you can say the nuclear power plant, there the operating temperature is very high. So, so, so you have to, you know, make your sensor in, in such a way to the, the, they work in the wide range, number one. Second, if you use the sensor in your, you know, plane or airplane or Boeing, there the temperature is, you know, the high range when, you know, the plane, you know, fly and then it is reaches to the and feeds there the temperature is somewhere around as minus 40 degree so so when we talk about the industrial iot your sensor is entirely different as per your need as per your application you have specifically designed your sensors and you can mount on that particular sensor for your application so this is the fundamental difference when we move to the industry, Internet of Things to industrial Internet of Things. Or you can say when we more number of sensors, more number of IoT devices are connected to perform a one task, it becomes an industry, Internet of Things. That's why in my first line, the people as you know classified just such as smart cities. So smart city is consist of many many more applications. So how do we incorporate all application in one platform? It is nothing but it is an internet industrial IoT, right? Because this revolution of industry 1.0 started in somewhere around in 1926 in So this is the fourth phase is come out with lot of dependency of the IT world. This nothing but it is the IT world industry 4.0, right? So, so, so you can also work on industry 4.0. Again, I am just tell you, it includes the five major components. So you can work on the, any one of the components is enough. Now the, 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 the advantage of industry 4.0 because the 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 lot of automation is you know happening in this place so so in the same time there is a, some advantage of industry 4.0 of course it is the 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 manufacturing cost is reduced and the your time consumption is also reduced but the, in the same time the most of the you know automation process there are some drawbacks so to avoid this situation of the employability or the lot of dependency on the this uh, IT platform, the, the, the next topic is suggested by the, the Japan in the fifth science and technology basic plan that is nothing but the society 5.0. So to balance the, you know, the, the IT advancement and the human centered society to balance these things we they propose the the 5.0 in the basic plan in the fifth science and technology vision so it follows if you say the the initially days in the long back the the society 1.0 is nothing but it's a hunting society then the you know the growing of the generation and then will depend will start the working and the the come up with the agriculture society that is the society 2.0 and then as i told you in the somewhere around in the 1900 the the industrial revolution come into the picture industry 1.0 so the third is the industrial society and then the four is the industrial four point is a lot of dependency of the information society or information world or IT worlds. So this is the society 4.0. And now this the people is proposing, the Japan is proposing the society 5.0 because nowadays, as I told you, the this number of sensor connected to per person is very high. So, so we want to reduce this, uh, we want to reduce this number of per person uh, connectivity device. The, the very good initiative by the Japan government is Society 
so so this is the 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 presentation which is related to the industry or you can say the internet of thing or you can say the internet of uh, everything which consists of all the enabling technologies all the different communication protocols their block diagram different applications so i rather i can call as the internet of thing i can say that it is in the you know, internet of everything because it include all the thrust areas or the emerging areas in this particular domain so 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 this is nothing but it is the internet of things and uh, this is the the first presentation first part of my presentation and uh, i'll take a two minute break and then we'll start the 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 second part that is the wireless sensor network oh, so one of the specific topic in this regard uh, so just only 2 minute break and i'll just shut up the things and we'll start the next presentation thank you if you have any question related to this part one you can just post into the 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 end of this session uh thank you Tap uh, dr tapan sir uh, for your wonderful uh, session and uh, informative uh, presentation on internet of things i sandeep mishra from e electronics and assistant professor in electronics and telecommunication department would like to take forward the questions which is put forward from the participant side the first question asked from okay okay so so the first question so can asked, you take after 1 minutes i'll just take a small break okay fine sir okay one minute only yeah i just do the setting things hello ha huh? Sandeep sir can we start the question answer Yes sir yeah The first question from Aisha Khan uh, what is difference okay. between a wireless sensor network and internet of things network She is from Uttar Pradesh okay. okay okay so 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 the question is the what is the difference between the internet of things and the wireless sensor network okay so so there are the fundamental if i take the 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 differentiate these two things number one is the thing is the sensors or softwares or hardware or embedded device number one and in internet of things internet of things also the information is globally available through internet okay so one part of the difference is thing in wireless sensor network always the thing is sensors whereas internet of things it may be a software it may be a hardware it may be a actuators number one difference second one is it is need not to you know it need not to be bother about the 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 data in internet of things all the data come up with the cloud 
through internet but in wireless sensor network it may it not necessary to send the data onto the cloud third difference is the the when we talk about the wireless sensor network wireless sensor network basically is a high order high order means when we deploy the the sensor in order is somewhere around 10000 10 to 4 and 10 to 5 that means in your um, periphery on in your area you have to deploy the 10000 or 1 lakh sensors whereas internet of the things is start from you know the individual start from the it consists of one sensor also so this is the uh, the answer from my side okay sir the next question again from aisha khan what is meant by a smart city regarding the internet of things okay so so the, it is uh, the smart city related to internet of thing very good questions because the if you talk about the smart city uh, so so everything is you know operated by the industrial iot how for example if you monitor the the traffic control so for traffic control what are your sensors sensor number one sensor is camera number two sensor is timing number 3 sensor is your environment so these three things come the, the when we fetch these three informations so the timing so one part of time the 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 signal is very busy number one or when you install the camera based on the camera you can predict the traffic movement third one is environment means environment means if you have heavy rainfall so you can you know uh, obviously the 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 traffic is moving very slowly so these three things you have to incorporate in one central location and operate the traffic number one second one is if you monitor the environment so different type of sensors is required for you know calculate the pollution index like uh, what is the you know the the co2 or s2 or nitrogen percentage etc right so this is the number one so so all the application is dependent upon the sensors all the application is dependent upon the sensors and how the sensor are you know interface that is the 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 job of the internet of things so all the applications when we use the you know sensors are integrate through the the connecting area like uh, wifi or gsm it form a iot application for smart city Okay, sir. Uh, next question from Anuga Bokare is IoT helpful in wind wind power technology? Okay, so so as I told you, the you just go to the visit the SCL technology website. Yes, definitely the IoT is useful for the wind plant or wind energy generation. So so how this is useful because the the I don't know exactly because I am not the expert in the windmill uh, energy generation. But I you have to monitor the the pressure or the 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 a a or to up when you generate the energy. How do we transfer this energy to the particular location? So some sort of you know the mechanism is required. So, so we can definitely use to implant the iot sensors in that particular domain okay sir next question from saswata maiti from west bengal uh, mm -hmm. internet of underwater things if possible through iot application please specify so so yes very good question so lot of people in you know the iit delhi professor professor call or uh, Professor Arun Kumar is working the underwater uh, signal processing. There we can use the they can use the different sort of sensors and but but they can form the sensor data in locally, not directly uploaded onto the the Google. So yes, definitely for underwater this particular uh, field, we can use the wireless sensor network. And when we extend the wireless sensor network, it become a uh, the application of IoT. Yes, definitely we can use for underwater. Okay, sir. Uh, next question from Yusuf Ahmed. Is there any better connectivity of RFIDs 
Zigbee, Wi-Fi, cellular, six low pan, LoRa in the future. Okay, so so now the 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 question is, you know, the 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 again the come into the interoperability part. But you are talking about the lot of domains. So I can here I can specify. I can take one or two domain. Like uh, people are most uh, when you make a small application, people are prefer the Zigbee module. Or in wireless sensor network, we are using the Zigbee module. Why? Because it is pro pro stack protocol is very easy to integrate. Number one, and it requires the very you know less energy you know, for long distance transmission. So, so where the the energy or the battery is a you know critical resource, so we can use the Zigbee. Second one is if you use the um, the technology like uh, 5G or LTE technology, they are their requirement is a lot of uh, energy. So, so every time when we you know plan an application of IoT, just keep, keep in mind whether my battery is irreversible or not, or I am using the solar battery. But your question is um, uh, the how to you know integrate or uh, can we use this? So definitely, hello. The people are Sir, your voice is technology breaking smartly. up. They are fetch the again. Yes. Okay. okay. So so should I repeat this answer? Uh, yes. Sir. In between, it was breaking the, up. The, the different company. Hello. Okay. It just, I stop my video, then I can try. Now, now I am audible. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So, so sorry, sorry due to some technical error from my side. Um, so the question is uh, how to integrate this technology? Can it be integrate, or what are the future direction of these technologies? So I am sure. Number one question is because it depends upon purely the application basis and the energy availability. Number one. Second one is there are the different operating frequency ranges. Number two. Third one is yes, you can integrate. You can do one thing. You can upload the data onto the cloud and fetch the data from the cloud. So cloud to the protocol connectivity is available. Okay, sir. So, the next. The next question from Sas Saswata Maitri from West Bengal. In yeah. rural agriculture, which is recently developed IoT device? For rural agriculture? Which is, is a recently developed IoT device? Okay, so, so I am not exactly tell you the what uh, recently the, the development of these agriculture devices, but the, the, the People are, you know, the making the one uh, um, interesting application. I just gone through it. They they make a one robotic arm, and on the robotic arm they mount one camera, and camera is you know moving the entire um, the the crop area and take the images. Based on these images, they can just predict the 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 what type of this uh, the, the requirement of the soil. So whether the soil is required because they, they fetch the images and predict the chloroform percentage, chlorophyll percentage, and basis on that, they suggest the 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 what type of you know the soil um, content is required for that particular crops. So that, that is the recent uh, you know application I gone gone through it. Uh, not exactly the the you can say the ruler one, but this is the agriculture college. Uh, Nanny has make the the application. Okay, sir. So again, the next question from the same person: mm -hmm. Any antenna possible to use for IoT application? Any antenna? Ha, uh, yeah. Okay, so 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 uh, no, so uh, this is uh, the again uh, before uh, giving this answer. Uh, just I am just um, 
ask one question. So how many, you know, antennas in your mobile phone? So in our mobile phone, we have around five to six uh, antennas. So in one mobile phone, you have to use the six, uh, you know, antenna. So again, in Internet of Things, you have to use the specific antenna, which is depend upon the operating frequency, what is the gain, and third one is what is the size. So, so this is the, you know, specific domain for the antenna expert, but for IoT, you have to first choose the, the, the communication protocol and then you can decide the type of antenna. Right, because uh, even though the people are working for the, the the different antenna technology, but still our smartphone consists of five to six antenna. Okay, sir. The next question from uh, Saurabh: What are M to M application that are available in these days? M to M or N to N? M to M machine to machine. M yeah, sir. M to M. So so so. Machine to machine, as I told you, the the machine to machine means things to things. So so okay. suppose uh, I install one temperature sensor here. Okay, so this is on the temperature. If I want to operate my air condition, so air condition is one thing, and my temperature sensor is another thing. So here my temperature says, uh, sensor is wave as a machine one. Whatever the information I receive in my mobile phone, based on this, I can operate my air condition. This is the smallest application I can tell you. So, so one sensor is behave as a machine one, and your air condition is behave as a machine two. So this is the nothing but is a machine to machine communication. Or if you operate the your air condition with the help of your air condition remote, it is also a machine to machine communication like that but if you like that if you fix the timer you can say that is the good application so if you fix the timer so like at 9 p.m my ac is start and by 6 a.m ac is automatically off this is of my application so you can say this is my machine to machine where the human intervention is not there right okay sir next question from pramod naik uh, from Karnataka, for IoT devices, IPv6 addressing schemes is sufficient or not? If not sufficient, how addressing of these devices will be implemented? Okay, so so uh, the, the, the problem is when we talk about the IPv6, because IPv6, I'm not, uh, you know, um, uh, tell the another solution because it is a standard... Uh, protocol given by the IEEE, whereas when you design your app own application, there is no standard IEEE protocol till date. So same the, the, the answer is for the IoT and the same answer is goes for the wireless sensor network. So, so if you go to the some standard procedure or operate your devices, you can use IPv6, but if you work on any specific application like defense or surveillance systems, you cannot use IPv6. You have to create your own communication protocol model so you can secure your environment. So you have to totally focus on the different operating frequencies and different communication protocol. And I'm really sorry, I would not, you know, suggest some alternative um, uh, protocols because I don't have any idea about the alternative protocols. Okay, sir. Next question from Yusuf Ahmed. Is there any industry 8.0 perhaps on the future? Uh, yes, sir. there are the, you know, uh, when the, you know, somebody is launches or the group of people is launching the industry 4.0. So definitely the, the, the next version is always, uh, you know, in the pipeline. So my point is that because the, the, the time framework for this is very huge. So next to 20 uh, years is the era of Internet of Things. So my aim is to just concentrate on the these technology. And if you want any, you know, future upcoming uh, uh, 
um, material you want, you can just visit the IOTanalytics.com because they are, you know, uh, every month they are publishing the future generation edition uh, for IoT. Okay. Next question from Debashish. How trust management is related to the IoT? Okay. So how trust management is related to uh, IoT? IoT. Right. So here the, the problem is when we talk about the IoT management system and uh, because if we take the example of uh, the smart city, so so we have to just concentrate on the, the, the important aspects where our data is not compromised. So if data is not compromised, so you have you have to use the such protocol. So the 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 trust and the security and you know the 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 maintained. So obviously the whenever you design any system, the the, the trust is the important factor, and that is dependent upon the the the, the developers. Okay, sir. The next. Relation in IoT and big data to know the relation between and big data. Okay, so so um, um, and I will. Uh, can you repeat this question because I am unable to listen? The relation between okay, uh, the question yeah. for me. Uh, relation between IoT and big data. Okay, so uh, uh, can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes. Relation between yes. the IoT and big data. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so I'll um, in in my presentation I'll take the point of the 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 substation in the Maharashtra city, right? So, in substation okay. of Maharashtra city, I took the example. There are three thousand substation and the five transformer. So, so somewhere around fifteen thousand transformer. And if you if you say that if the 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 hundred okay. test on particular transformer that means come out to be somewhere around uh, 15 lakhs uh, you know the test onto the transformer and if the frequency is you take only you know one hour so 15 lakh data into 24 is your per day data so how it is voluminous of that that particular data so so automatically in one day you have the you know, the somewhere around, uh, you can say, these six crore samples. So, so now you can correlate the only the one day if you have the you know uh, six crore transactions. So, so now you can imagine the how is data is voluminous. So that's why the these this is big data is one of the enabling technology. How you can data is you know processed. How to store how to store the data, how to compress, how to clean. So these are the job of the, the, the big data part. So, so you can say that the big data is, so this is the example of only the 3000 substations. Now you can imagine how many sensors is required in one particular smart city. So you can easily correlate with the big data part with your IoT. Okay, sir. The next question from Supriya Dicholkar. Uh, can we design intrusion detection system for IoT with good accuracy using machine learning and deep learning? Um, answer, this is the, the, the answer is, is in the question itself. Can we design an intruder system with good accuracy with the help of machine learning? And, so, and deep learning. Yes, deep learning. So obviously, yeah. this is the answer. So, so for this particular case, I can say this: Yes, you can definitely design the intruder system. But when we talk about the 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 accuracy, so you have to you have the you know the the clear image if you use the camera. So when we talk about the camera, you are not using the you know Internet of Things. You have to go for the industrial Internet of Things because the lot of heavy computational is required when we talk about the camera and also the the data is very voluminous data is very voluminous and the more number of sensors is required for that particular field to detect the intruder so yes definitely we can design but you have to do use the high-end system 
so give the accurate result not exactly the if you using the simple camera and do the processing no it is not the suffices the 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 accuracy so for accuracy your both hardware part means camera as well as the your computational device is very high end so yes definitely you can design and people are also working only on the this direction only the next question from milind rampur is does machine learning and iot can be a great combination in industry 4.0 yes definitely the one and of the where does it stand yes definitely it is the very crucial role because when we talk about the industrial um, iot or industry 4.0 there are there are the lot of sensor um, are involved whereas when we talk about iot is a very small number of sensor but when we move to the industrial iot there are large number of sensor are you know integrate so obviously for this is the industrial 4.0 in my slide is mentioned the the cognitive intelligence or you can say the artificial intelligence and machine learning is people are using predictive data analytic the data and to you know improve their system so yes this is a definitely a great combination of iot so people are you know most of the data is coming from through sensor or through software and then through sensor or software whatever the inputs or samples you apply the machine learning so definitely it is a great combination of iot and machine learning okay sir. the next question from nandini rajakumari uh can we use internet of things in flood control can we use the internet of things in flood control yes definitely we can use the internet of things in the flood control so for example i can tell you how we can measure the flood and nowadays we are measuring the flood in the dam the water storage level we can predict the you know flood or we can the flow of water we can predict the Uh, the flood or we can be you know the the weather prediction we can uh, you know uh, predict the flood situation so like these the all are things to be required the some sensing phenomena so for example for weather prediction so you have to use the satellite data so one of the our thing next is the water level or the dam so dam will give you the warning alertment based on the the water level in the dam so all are the you know the things our uh, data is available on internet or you can say available through things so yes definitely for the flood warning you can use the internet of things okay sir now we'll uh, moving ahead to the next part of this uh, session uh, okay. sir would you like to go for the wireless presentation or yes. we'll... hello so is my is my slide is visible uh yes sir yes yes sir okay so i have uh, 30 minutes yes sir okay so um, i hope my slide is visible now come to the my second part that is the the wireless sensor network uh, so in this uh, because um, the the time constraint i'll take the some the introduction part of wireless sensor network in this case not uh, cover the the entire um, uh, the stuff of a wireless sensor network so so moving this uh, the, the the my presentation so as we know that what is wireless sensor network so so The, the now the question asked from the participant is what is the difference between the 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 wireless sensor network and internet of things so as the, the one thing is clear the wireless sensor network is densely deployed number one wireless sensor network is densely deployed and whereas iot it's not necessary number one second one is in the wireless sensor network the thing is always a sensor whereas in internet of thing things may be as i told you anything whatever the data available on cloud or software or hardware embedded sensor equator stacks whatever wireless sensor network deploy the monitoring the physical events 
but it is not necessary in the case of iot right and then the, the, the third important thing is when we deploy the the things uh, for internet of things purpose it is it may be a, always the connected through a power it may or may not be but in the the wireless sensor network the the power supply is only one time so battery is not replaceable so so and the the sensor node is consist of the the sensing unit basically which converted the physical quantity into the electrical quantity you can say that transducer one processing unit when the lot of the, the data come to the different sensors or lot of packets come from different sensor they can process that particular sensor packet and convert it into a small packet instead of the the more number of packet they can reduce the size of the packets and third one is the communication unit of course when we talk about each other we have to have one mechanism wireless mechanism so maybe we can use zigbee bluetooth wifi gsm lora anything so so basically a node consist of three unit the sensing processing and communication now the classification when we talk about the classification of a wireless sensor network so so here first thing is what is the mode of functionality what is the mode of functionality so my so here there are three types of mode one is the proactive mode one is the reactive mode and one is the hybrid mode what do you mean by proactive means the period based so suppose i have installed one temperature sensor in every 15 minute it will it will give me a reading every 15 minute 15 30 45 1 hour 1 hour 15 minute like that so this is the proactive periodically you know give the data second one is the reactive so i install the temperature sensor whenever my temperature room temperature goes to you know beyond 26 degree it will give you the reading or it fired the event so it is a reaction based so i decide one threshold value that is 26 whenever the temperature crosses 26 26.1 it immediately give me a warning or request or or one of the event is occur so it is a reactive based uh, so hello 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 so ppt is not visible it's uh, the previous slide only uh, is there the current slide is not visible to us sorry i'll just check it out once again yes sir thank you now it is visible yeah, it is visible now thank you thank you so thank much you. okay sorry so now now the what is the hybrid so suppose i want to install uh, the one of the sensor which is monitoring a nuclear power plant some you know the harmful gases you have to take care of them so suppose i install the reactive um, sensor over there and many a harmful gas sense it it will immediately give the response but when we install our sensor and uh, sensor is fail it's not working so how do we identify this so for this particular location and application specific we install the hybrid combination so it will give you the reading there is no gas leakage here in every hourly and whenever the 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 reaction occurred it immediately give you the results so for that application specific we are using the hybrid combination that is a combination of both proactive and reactive one more uh, the the functionality is there that is the the bidirectional or query based so suppose i uh, i install the ten sensor in my room so i just immediately ask what is the you know reading of sensor 2 so i am just questioning to sensor 2 what is the status so this this approach is you can say the query based approach this approach is you can say that the query based approach number one second one is the 
the network node type so network node type there are two types of node that is the homogeneous node or heterogeneous node homo means the same kind or hetero means a different kind so homogeneous means when we deploy the all the sensor nodes are you know the the measuring the temperature number one so based on the sensing capability you can say the it is homogeneous but but if the all the sensor having the initial energy is 1 joule that only you can say it is homogeneous heterogeneous means all the sensor are temperature but the 50% sensor having the 1 joule of energy and rest 50% is the 10 joule of energy so that that make our network is heterogeneous or you can say when the half of the temperature half of the sensor measuring the temperature and half of the sensor is measuring the pressure the combination of temperature and pressure is become make a heterogeneous environment so network node is again two types homogeneous or heterogeneous transmission node we had already discussed there are the n number of transmission modes in this so so you can use because the uh, the the we deploy the sensor and they are you know uh, talk to each other by wirelessly so so wireless um, protocol or you can say the communication technology is required so there are n number of communication technology applications we had already mentions and then my important you know point i have to cover and this is the network structures as i told you you and somebody asked the question is ipv6 and other version so as i told you there are no specific you know protocol uh, for wireless sensor network no specific protocol of wireless sensor network so 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 that's why the 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 people are you know the, the proposed the different solutions but i am proposing here i have i proposed in 2014 the structure of the wireless sensor network so whenever you design the any of the wireless sensor network it always fall into these four structures always so so i i proposed in this 2014 the network structures of wireless sensor network and so 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 number one is the single hop single sync number one is single hop single sync where as the the all the in the in this network if you can see that if you look at it the if you in this network you screen Am I audible? Now, now you are audible, sir. Ah, uh, because madam, there is heavy rainfall in the Nagpur city, so okay. probably there are some you know bandwidth problem in internet. So okay, sir. So whenever my voice is not come, just please let me know. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So so network is the structure is uh, divided into the four parts, and. Um, so if you look at the diagram carefully there are the some um, circle in the gray color that is the the sink or you can see the base station in my figure rest of the sensor nodes rest of the sensor nodes and if you look the figure 1a the all the sensor node is you know reported to the one node all the sensor node is reported to the one particular node and that that node is behave as a cluster head or all are the cluster member in cluster head directly send the data to the base station so this this is the this is the single hop single sync concept so every node data is through one hop it reaches to the sync through one hop it is reaches to the sync 
So in this particular diagram, only one sink is there. So this is single half, single sink figure. Now move to the figure B. Move to the figure B. There are multiple uh, path is there, and multi why multiple half the sink data is reaches to the uh, sorry sensor data is reaches to the sink. So this is one B is multiple half single sink figure. Similarly, if you look at the figure one C and one D, one C have the two gray color circle box node. 1c and 1d these this are the sinks so in my figure there are multiple sink is there multiple sink is there in 1c in 1c we are using the so in this case if you look at the carefully the figure 1c is uh, the data is reaches from node to sink via single hop but the mul multiple sink is present and then the same as in figure 1d the data is reaches to the sink to multiple hop where we are using the multiple sinks so so whenever you design any any kind of wireless sensor network the, the application always lies in one of the network structures then too, there is a no standard IEEE protocol for wireless sensor network, but the structure point of view does always fall into uh, the these four category only. And when uh, when we talk about the wireless sensor network, it is very important uh, to design when we design the wireless sensor network whether you are an electronics engineer or computer science engineer so whenever you design your uh, network you always you know follow the radio model concept because as i told you the, the number one point is in wireless sensor network the battery is not replaceable if the battery is not replaceable that means the energy constraint is a important factor so we have to minimize the energy consumption so how do we minimize the energy consumption because most of the energy is you know utilized or you can say the 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 use in sensor node for during the transmission so this this phenomena is always depend upon the radio model which is the you know phrase equation that is proposed by the scientist phrase in 1944 the be well defined you know well known you know equation for wireless communication so so basis on this radio model i propose these the you know four technology uh, four network structures so now i'll take the the example and i'll you know uh, try to prove um, the utility of this particular equation Okay, so so um, this is the one transmitter and receiver, and the distance between the transmitter and receiver is a d meter. So the so the transmitting energy requirement is uh, depend upon two factor. One is the number of bits that is k, and second one is the distance between the transmitter and receiver that is d. And the statement, if you look at the equation of transmitter energy, it depend upon the k, k is number of bit, e electric. This means energy dissipation in the electronic devices. D, d is uh, your distance between the transmitter and receiver, and n is nothing but your path loss exponent. So, what is the path loss exponent? See the transmission from one sensor to another sensor is depend upon the environment. So if it is the direct communication, then the n value is two. If it is through, you know, through reflection, refraction, diffraction, or the multiple path, then n equals to four. So normally this value is, you know, moving from two to six. It depend upon the environment. So whether your your internet in their 
wireless sensor network is to be deployed onto your factory area urban area or you know high rise building kind of thing and based on this you can you know you know the the we can decide the value of n and if you you know deployed into the normal field where the direct communication is possible then the it is also known as the free space communication and the value of n is 2 so suppose um, we have um, so how d uh, depend upon d so let me take the example your transmitter is you know capability to transmit the data for 1 meter let's say for instance your transmitter is capable to transmit the data till 1 meter so the optim maximum optimum distance is d not is equals to right 1 meter so if you transmit the data within 1 meter directly then n is equals to 2 and what is the value of n n is equals to 2 if you transmit the data beyond 1 meter then the value of n is equals to 4 it is multipath you can say that so i'll take the one example the optimum transmitting range d not that i mentioned is 1 meter the distance between now i'll take the transmitter to receiver let's say 2 meter so what is the energy requirement here if you want if you look at the equation number 1 etx k is constant e electric is constant d is now very distance between this so etx is proportional to d raised to power n etx is proportional to d raised to power n and my d is 2 meter if my d is 2 meter and it is uh, beyond the 1 meter range so n is what when beyond the optimum range then n is equals to 4 so the total energy consumption in this uh, case is what the total energy consumption in this case is nothing but 2 raised to power 4 that come out to be 16 joule right the optimum distance again noted down the optimum distance is 1 meter we have to transmit the data for 2 meter that means d is equals to 2 meter beyond 1 meter the value of n is 4 within 1 meter value is 2 so now we want to transmit the data is for 2 meter so n is 4 so d raised to power 4 is nothing but 16 joule right now i can do one thing i can insert it one more node in between the transmitter and receiver exactly in one meter so the transmitter to node inserted node is also one meter and inserted node to the receiver is also one meter so the energy requirement from transmitter to inserted node now what is the distance exactly in one meter so n is two so e is nothing but 1 raised to power 2 that come out to 1 joule number 1. Second point is, second point is from inserted node to receiver again the distance is 1 meter also energy requirement is 1 raised to power 2 that is 1 joule. So the total energy consumption is 1 joule plus 1 joule is equals to 2 joule so when we insert the node in between the transmitter and receiver the energy requirement is only 2 joule whereas when we directly transfer from transmitter to receiver at 2 meter distance that energy requirement is 16 joule so when we introduce one node in between or you can say the repeater in between the energy requirement is drastically down and the, the data is moving through one hop to the receiver, not directly through one hop to the receiver. So the, in the same point of time, when the energy is drastically reduced, but the cost of network is increased because we have inserted one node in between. So like that, you have to decide your application or now this application is depend upon which technology, which communication protocol, which routing protocol that you are using in your application, Zigbee, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. So all the layers are interconnected. So if you design the routing, if you design the routing, so if you 
design the routing that means you have to knowledge of the physical layer as well so this is the important parameter when we talk about the you know radio model so how routing protocol is depend upon the physical layer this is the one example so so the time is 5 minutes and we have you know lot of uh, open problem available so just quickly go through it so here i am designing my layer classification as architecture architecture means how your sensor what type of physical quantity is measure and uh, so so everything is depend upon the your node architecture and how this node you can form a network so network architecture is a problem then how this uh, um, node is you know talk to each other so so what type of technology you is using what is the distance mechanism in this case what type of security you are using what is the time synchronization in between so point to point communication you can also work. similarly when you form a network so the, obviously there is a routing protocol and um, how this routing data is you know utilized for your application so how the transport layer come into the picture what type of quality of service you are using so there are a lot of you know research problem available in this case and um, again this uh, point to point and networking form a link layer address and naming routing protocol so lot of open research problem in this wsn domain is available you can just go through it and you can work on any of the problem so architecture based point to point based networking based so lot of problem is there so you can just start you know the just go through the one the interesting research paper as a a wireless uh, sensor network a survey by if eclides if eclides if e k l i d i z eclides so so that is the famous paper i can just uh, show through the end of my presentation so these are these are the some uh, you know problem available open research problem we will level in wireless sensor network and as i told you that they are very tiny sensors and the power uh, is you know only one time you can just give the power once you deploy you cannot you know charge every day or every week so so the the whenever you design the wsn we have the three objective one is the how to minimize the energy how we can deploy in smartly so cover the maximum area and the remain the connectivity is high so minimize the energy consumption maximize the coverage and connectivity and how you know the the data is routing so we can you know optimize our lifetime so these are the objective when we design the the wireless sensor network so so i can just uh, stop my topic here um because of time is already 1257 so now i'll take some question if sir if you have any you know question from the audience side i'll happy to give the answer we'll go uh, thank you sir for less sensor network session now we'll moving ahead for the question answer the question from anuj sharma what are the way to protect the electricity thefting by iot okay so so the the question is how to protect the the so nowadays the people are number one they are you know measuring the reading through the the camera so the person come to your home and just measuring the you know uh, so there is no manual error as such number one second one is if somebody is going to you know the thefting you you just install one sensor and monitoring the you know, daily requirements if this daily requirement is you know the fluctuated as the daily requirement is the fluctuated so as you can you clearly identify the, the the something went wrong or maybe person is not at home number one. second third one is now the the people are you know working on the the you know, for the smart electricity 
supply management system so here the 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 every you know sub station they can you know install the sensors so so whenever the local transformer in your area is placed they can the 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 take the reading of that particular area and the any you know fluctuation going on you can immediately you know catch this so yes definitely so uh, so like the health of the transformer mm. i give you example same type of application you can use in uh, for the home purpose as well for monitoring the the utilization okay sir the next question for uh, nikita from maharashtra what point should be kept in mind while from the sensors to avoid large amount of data to make managing data more easy hello hello can you can you repeat the question uh, yes sir what can i collecting data to avoid large amount of data to make managing data more easier okay so so i just i am um, because due to some poor bandwidth i am un un unable to listen the question properly but i can repeat the questions so can you correct me just so how to you know managing the data mm. to minimize the data transfer or something else Yes, sir. It is. Uh, where, how we will manage data when we are collecting from the sensor? And uh, she would like to ask, like, when having the large amount of data, so how to manage those large amount of data? Okay. So make it suppose, easier. Okay, fine. So suppose you have to deploy the sensors, and uh, you have the uh, sensor create the large amount of data. So how to you know um, manage the data, or how to optimize the data? That is the question. i think yes, so so yes, so sir. in this case if we talk about the wireless sensor network there is a very interesting phenomena in the wireless sensor network that is the the data aggregation so what is data aggregation i can explain in the the example so suppose you deploy the one sensor no uh, network and consist of 10 nodes and all are you know the measuring the temperature so suppose uh, if you deploy the temperature sensor at your home so the almost the reading is same so almost the reading is same means uh, so one temperature give the uh, one temperature will give you the uh, reading like 25 degree another is giving the uh, 26 uh, and the the and uh, some temperature give the 27 so like that you have the reading 25 25.5 like that so you have the 10 different packets now the but but your aim is what you have you want what is my minimum temperature at my home what is my maximum temperature at my home or what is the average temperature if you concentrate of these three things so you can just apply some pre, pre processing technique and converted these 10 packets of 10 different sensor node uh, data converted into a three packet like minimum value maximum value and average value so instead of 10 packet you are transferring only the three packets so so like that you can manage your data and it is different from data fusion it is a data aggregation okay sir the next question from kunal gogle mm -hmm. can can amount of data transmission be increased using lora considering open source audio application amount of uh, data yes sir yeah because the when you you know move to the different technologies so the technology is main aim is the the, the high transmitting range rate so yes definitely you can increase the high transmitting range but in case of the you know sam we talk about the audio signals but the audio signal frequency the standard sampling frequency is fixed as the 44.1 kilohertz right so yes definitely you can increase the data rate but but the sampling frequency again you have to take the constant okay sir the last question of the day uh, from ansh tripathi for taking lab of iot for students from home 
which simulation software to use as we don't have the hardware actual hardware so which simulation software we can go for okay so so there are the, the two three um, answers is available because the problem is uh, the hardware availability in this uh, pandemic time is not available so my my suggestion is if you go to the arduino id but the arduino id the paid version paid version will give you the environment exactly the virtual environment for your lab number one then these people are also using the tinker lab but the problem is you cannot you know fruitful answer because the the, the challenging task is the interfacing of the sensors with your um, uh, the devices so obviously you can just prepare your you know the only the 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 program part not exactly the virtual simulation that particular time. hello hello yes sir uh, thank you uh, this is from uh, my end moving ahead for the next uh, further session now i request uh, dr jayeshri khanapure ma'am head of electronics and telecommunication department to propose vote of thanks thank you professor sandeep on behalf of kj somaya institute of engineering and information technology sai in mumbai i dr jayeshri kanapuri professor and head department of electronics and telecommunication engineering take this opportunity to propose vote of thanks to all those who helped us in the successful execution of this webinar firstly i would like to thank our today speaker dr Tap tapan kumar jain hod electronics and communication department triple it nagpur thank you sir for your, for accepting our invitation and being part of this webinar series i would like to express my profound gratitude to our principal dr suresh ukrande sir and vice principal dr sunita patil madam for their constant support and guidance a special thanks to all the members of organizing committee special thanks to professor pranali hathode and professor sandeep mishra for their support and help in executing this webinar thanks to our students mr jash shangvi and mr saurin shah for their back end support for all these three webinars conducted under department of electronics and telecommunication engineering i also would like to express my thanks to mr hande mr burunkar for providing the it support finally the wonderful participants who have turned up in large number not only from our institute but also from other institutes thank you everyone we appreciate your you you being here now i request all of you to raise for the national anthem जन गण मन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा भिंज हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जल धितरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे 